Hi there, welcome to Capital Today. I'm Hillary Kennedy, and I am really looking forward to this conversation because I am talking with Jamie Coleman, who is deeply invested in the future of education here in Texas, and she is running for the Texas State Board of Education in District 12. So Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me, Hillary. Well, so first of all, I wanna know a little bit about you and why you even decided to jump into this race? Because I know you are a mom of three. Did that kind of weigh in, factor in to you deciding to do this? It did. It, it actually means it makes absolutely no sense for me to be doing this. <laughs> but that's why it's, it's so important to me. I, I actually worked in education policy many years ago. I, I had the, the rare fortune to somehow be, be exposed to Milton Friedman when I was in college at, at Rice University. And I instantly became a big fan of school choice and of education reform in general and worked in, in public policy for years in, in different roles, but I had no idea how much more it would mean to me once I had my own children. So that's that's really why I'm here. I, I see that not children across our state don't all have the same opportunities that mine do, and I wanna change that. Absolutely, and you, know, you brought up public policy. Tell me a little bit about just kind of your overall vision for the educational landscape in Texas. I would love for, for families to have more empowerment. Uh, we have 70,000 kids on charter school wait lists in Texas. And there may be some double counting there. It's hard to tell exactly. But the point is, there are tens of thousands of families who would like to be in a different school who don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's something that the state board can have direct um, authority over, is, is in approving those charter schools. And we, we have to do our due diligence. We can't just let any, any fly-by-night operator open a school. But I think on the on the whole, we need to put those choices more in the hands of parents. Right. And I think, you know, that brings up a great point. So many people are joining those wait lists because they're very unhappy with the curriculum that's being taught to their children. And I think a lot of people didn't even realize what was being taught to their children until the pandemic sort of opened mm -hmm. some eyes. And some of the hot button issues are critical race theory and so many of the the books in our libraries or things that are mentioned in curriculum, it's very inappropriate or overtly sexual and a lot of parents have a big problem with that. So how do you plan to address those kinds of issues? Well, I think the Texas legislature has, has made some very positive strides in legislation um, in addressing issues like those. Now those do still have to be implemented, and, and largely that's left up to the State Board of Education, as well as in partnership with the TEA. But um, unfortunately right now, we have a State Board of Education that approved an African American Studies curriculum that is based on the 1619 project. And the current board members may say, well, it, no, that's just the date 1619, it's just mentioned in it multiple times. It has nothing to do with the 1619 project, well, of course it does, because if we were talking about the pilgrims, that would be 1620. If we were talking about earlier Spanish um, settlers, that, that would be maybe 100 years earlier. 1619 is the dog whistle for the 1619 project and for the CRT movement. Of course, that is why it's mentioned in that curriculum. And we had a state board that not only approved it, they, it should never have gotten that far in the first place, much less been approved. Right. Well, so... The curriculum needs to change. So what sort of measures do you think that the, the Texas Board of Education needs to make to ensure that it meets like sort of the evolving needs of the students, but still has that framework where people feel comfortable with what their children are being taught in school? So I think, I think a big issue that needs to be addressed is that the State Board of Education needs to be more diligent in who gets on the working committees that help lead to these the Texas, the TEKS, we call it, the mm -hmm. Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, that's really the framework that forms the basis for a curriculum for our instructional materials that get approved here in Texas. Unfortunately, these working committees, the, the, the SBOE, the State Board, has sort of delegated those to the TEA to fill up these working committees. They get filled with leftists. They get filled with appointees that, you know, teachers union has supported. And then you end up with, I think it was 2023 or 2022, I forget, last year or two, uh, they were supposed to rewrite, the, the State Board was tasked with rewriting the social studies teaks. The day they go to vote for it, there's things like, um, when we're talking about 9-11, we have to strike the term radical Islamic terrorism because that could offend people. Uh, in the Texas history, it, it talks about how the Alamo was racist. I mean, these things that are totally absurd, totally driven by an agenda on the left. Mm -hmm. And to the state board's credit, they didn't, they didn't vote to pass those teaks. They had to vote to table them. So they didn't even get it done. It should never have gotten to that point. We need state board members who are diligent, choosing people. We, we have experts 
on our side of things. We don't, we don't need to go beyond that. We have subject matter experts that we can tap to help us in partnership with the State Board of Education as we rewrite these, these TEKS. Absolutely. So you are a successful real estate agent. You interact with people from all walks of life and you're out and about in the community all the time. So how will you actively engage with parents and teachers and just the community at large to kind of understand their perspective and then incorporate that in those decision-making processes? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you really do have to kind of have your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the community to bring that back. Absolutely. There's um, the, uh, just some of the things that I'm involved with in our community. I'm a teacher, or I'm sorry, I'm a group leader in a Bible study fellowship. I attend Park City's Presbyterian, which is a large church that draws from all over the, the greater Dallas area. Um, our kids are involved, of course, as, as you can imagine, in all sorts of sports mm -hmm. and, you know, piano, all, all the different things. So, so, yes, I interact with hundreds of people on a weekly basis, in addition to my own family and my own clients with, with my business that right. you mentioned. So um, I love that. I would not be running for office if I didn't love talking to people and getting to know them and hearing what's important to them. And um, and, I, and I do need to make it a point to, to reach outside. My district goes literally from Love Field, which is where we live, essentially, all the way to Texarkana. Very large, very diverse district. Mm -hmm. I've started traveling it as part of my campaign, and I look forward to getting to know even more people throughout um, the course of my, once I win, I'll get to know them even better. Well, and it's such a, it's such a bold, brave thing to do to run for something like this, and you do encounter all kinds of different people. So is there, is there anything that's happened on the campaign trail that's been a surprise to you or something about this that was... Uh, maybe unexpected or different than you thought it would be? Uh, I, I've been, uh, I mean, it, it's been wonderful, truly. I mean, just the encouragement I've gotten when I first tell people, friends of mine that I'm running, just, it's, it's just like a, a pep talk every time I have another call. And ultimately I'm asking them to give me money. And so, you know, the, the, <laughs> they probably regret being quite so enthusiastic at the beginning. But no, I've, I've done two different forums so far. I feel um, just people have come up and afterwards and thanked me for, for getting in the race and uh, appreciated what I had to say. And so that's been really That's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so since you have been deeply involved in education for a long time in lots of different ways, do you have um, a favorite book or something that's kind of shaped your thoughts on education or on teaching and learning? You know, that's a good question. I've, I've never taught in the classroom. Um, my kids go to a classical school, and so I do have to be very involved in, in doing the, the phonogram flashcards, and we do our <laughs> Bible reading, of course, and lots of reading out loud, both, both my husband and I and, and the kids. So I, I think that, that whole structure, um, that model, is, is, has been really eye-opening mm -hmm. for me, and I think there are parts of that that we can export to schools around Texas. Absolutely. Well, so if people want to get involved and be more involved in their children's education and know what's going on in their school district, do you have any recommendations on how to do that? Because I think a lot of parents want to know more, but they just aren't even sure where to start. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important, and this is something that I that, that's kind of been formulating in my brain ever since I filed and have been spending all day every day in this in this topic now. But I think there really needs to be more transparency for parents. It needs to be easier for them to learn, well, what are these TEKS that my kids are supposed to be learning? What are the textbooks that we're using? Maybe there's digital copies of those that I could that I could be loaned out for me to review. And I think um, probably most parents didn't ever that didn't cross their mind. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned earlier, the the pandemic and zooming into classrooms sort of pulled the wool from a lot of people's eyes yes. and, and woke them up. And so I think to the extent we can make it even easier, just publish a list of all those books, make make digital copies available, then parents can make a more informed decision if they have an ability to choose their school. Yes, that would be wonderful. So if people want to know more about you, Jamie, what you do, what you stand for, how they can get involved, how they can donate, how they could be a part of the campaign, where should they go? Well, you can go to my website, which is Jamie for Tex, TX. Dot com. So Jamie for Texas, except do TX instead of Texas. Um, and it's J-A-M-I-E-F-O-R-T-X.com. And then you can also find me on Facebook, Jamie for Texas. And, and I'm on LinkedIn, too. That's more of a professional page. But if you want to learn more right. about my life and my kids and my work, you can find me on LinkedIn. Well, and fun fact, you were 
in fact, Miss Texas at one point in time. I was. So you know how to represent the people in the state. <laughs> Not only was I Miss Texas, I was Miss Texas when you had to be a biological woman to compete right. for Miss Texas. So. Right. So yeah, that, that was back when things were even harder. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing Thank you. your vision and for being here. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Hillary. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Jamie thanks so much. Thanks so much.